Hello, everyone, and welcome to DeviantArt Critique. I am your host, XenonCork996, and today I thought I'd do something very different. Since this is the final episode, I thought I'd give my all into this one. Enter Alloy Rabbit, a guy who I've wanted to talk about for a very long time. He is by far the most prolific artist I'll have ever reviewed in this series, having over 13,000 watchers on DeviantArt, as well as a steadily growing following of over 10,000 on Twitter. He has existed on the internet in some form or another for a very long time, so I feel that going over his entire history is of paramount importance for this episode. Alloy Rabbit is an artist who, over his almost two-decade-long venture on DeviantArt, evolved from a relatively average artist into a prolific and well-known fetish artist with a loyal fanbase to boot. To start, we'll be going back in time to when he first made an account on DeviantArt, which will take us back to the beginning. Two thousand and three. Sonic Adventure 2 was only two years old, George W. Bush began the Iraq War, 4chan opened its shop in October, and Metal 2 first started to post his work on December 2nd. During the first year of his existence on DeviantArt, Metal 2's art was pretty basic to say the least. It has this primitive early 2000s touch to it, which does give it a bit of charm, but it also has a few flaws that come from said primitivism. These flaws, most notably the coloring seen in his digital art, as well as the anatomy of some of his characters, are a hallmark in this early stage of Metal 2's career, and he would gradually improve on them in the years to come. However, most of his non-colored art from this time is fairly good in my opinion. In addition to that early 2000s charm I mentioned earlier, there is also the fact that a lot of it feels like concept art, which, let's face it, is most likely the case. He was, of course, a fan of the Sonic franchise. That fact could be gleaned from the subjects of his art alone. Take, for example, his flagship and namesake original character at the time, Metal. Being that his name was short for Metal Sonic version 2, Metal was, of course, a more human form of Metal Sonic. Metal 2 drew metal using a lot of guns, and being very cool and badass in general. But there were also drawings like this, which showed another side to his character. There were a lot more OCs than just metal, however. Take this image, for example. This is a reference sheet of five of Metal 2's OCs. Metal is the guy on the left, of course, but the yellow rabbit in the middle, named Chrome, and the black and red rabbit on the right, Janetta, spelled with a G, or Gen for short, would become staple characters of his in the years to come. Keep an eye on this girl, by the way. Her name is Remedy, or Rem for short, and she'll be very important later on. Metal 2 drew his OCs plenty of times, but aside from that, Metal 2 also drew some characters from the actual Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, as well as some robots. Plenty of robots, actually. I'd say that the robots were his second favorite subject to draw during the first year of his online existence. Of course, there were some one-off drawings here and there, but all in all, Metal 2 was just an amateur that was getting his start. However, like all artists, he would begin to evolve. 2005 was just like any other year for Metal 2. He kept on drawing his OCs, as well as creating some new ones, such as this gal, a mech pilot named Fole, spelled thusly. But aside from that, there were also plenty of other drawings, comics, and sketches that he made that year. Hell, he was still improving his art style, and a lot of that work began to show in this year. It was a pretty good year for him in terms of his artwork, all things considered. However, Things would begin to change in December, when Metal 2 made this. That right there is an image of his original character, Jen, as a giant, and this would foreshadow what Metal 2 would start to become. In 2006, Metal 2 would draw Jen as a giant more and more often, in addition to all of the other stuff he was drawing, including his OCs, Sonic characters, and robots, 
which had become Metal 2's bread and butter by this point. However, there was also the fact that Metal 2 had fallen into the sphere of influence of one Stampy Dragon, a macrophile and furry who is still around to this day. They would first encounter each other this year, but they would grow closer together as time passed. Metal 2 would also start drawing other people's giant OCs this year, and this trend would only continue. Of course, there was the continuous improvement in style that was still occurring, but for whatever reason, at the end of 2006, Metal 2 would quietly stop posting to his accounts, leaving behind a fanbase of over 200 watchers in the process. His account has sat as a quiet relic for over a decade. However, instead of leaving DeviantArt altogether, Metal 2 adopted a new alias. This alias was, of course, Alloy Rabbit. Ah yes, the username that's widely known today. Under this new alias, he would start to post his work in 2007, keeping some of the characters that he made during the Metal 2 years while also making some new ones on occasion. While a lot of his stuff during this time was pretty much normal, for example, all the robots and stuff, that trend of him drawing giantess artwork would continue, with this type of artwork only becoming more and more prevalent as he continued to fall into the macrophile sphere of influence. Take, for example, this character, an anthropomorphic lopunny named Truffle. He created the character in 2008 because, and I quote, I wanted a Pokemon Anthro character to mess around with Jane Falest's Jane, Darkraven 123's Amps, and Stampy Dragon's Molly and Vapor. And, since I am doomed to be perpetually surrounded by rabbits, said Pokemon Anthro was basically predetermined by fate to be Lopunny, XD. To fit in with the aforementioned characters, she will also of course be Macro, but that's no surprise coming from me and my gallery. After trying several different styles and such, this is what I've more or less settled on for now. I call it a beta test design, I guess. We'll see what happens, what kind of personality develops, all of that stuff. Also, remember that time I mentioned Rem a couple minutes ago? Well, Alloy continued to draw her as well, but inevitably he would also draw her giant more than a few times because, of course he'd do it. Rem would eventually become Alloy's flagship human character, being drawn in many, many situations as a giantess. This is where I begin to have a bit of an issue with him because, unlike all the other characters Alloy had drawn so far, Rem is a literal child. I suspect that Alloy doesn't have a set age for her nowadays, but back in 2009, he said this in response to another user. <laughs> nice. How old is Rem? Thanks. And I'd say somewhere like, I don't know, 8 to 10-ish maybe? I haven't really given it too much thought. But that fact didn't stop people from expressing their liking for her. Can I be Rem's little man pet? I grab hold of her toes and plead for mercy. If I got lucky, I'd be her little toe massaging pet, right? I don't know much about her or the kind of giantess she is, but I'd love to be her pet. I could use a powerful goddess in my life right now. <sighs> wow. I think she's a bit young for you. Um, sorry. I know her age and, um, just forget what I said. I didn't mean anything sexual. Well, aside from that, however, there was yet another artistic trend that started around this time period. Alloy would begin to draw inspiration from more Japanese media, including Doho, as well as Sailor Moon, both of which were introduced to him by people he encountered on DeviantArt. Of course, his style would continue to improve, and it would be quite refined by the turn of the decade. Sure, there were still flaws in his work, but Alloy had become a competent artist by this time. The macrophile trend, however, was here to stay. This period of time is largely a continuation of trends from the years previous. Not only did the quality of Alloy's art increase dramatically, but the majority of his art would pertain to macrophilia. There was the occasional normal piece of art here and there, but for all intents and purposes, Alloy had completed his transition to a dedicated macro artist. However, he experimented quite a bit during this time period, which could explain the dramatic increase in quality, as well as the shift in his style from less of an old, 
2000s Sega-y look to a more modern anime-like look. Not only did he try out new programs and digital tools in order to test things out, but he also dipped his hand into comics. A few small comics were made, such as this one featuring Rem that escalates quite quickly as well as this one where she manipulates a waiter into crushing a model car for some inexplicable reason. There are also bigger comics, specifically two featuring characters from Toho. Those were Ryzen v Sakuya, which first started being uploaded in 2010 and featured said characters fighting each other. Wild Giant, an ogre from Cloud Mountain released in 2011 featuring quite a few Toho characters being shrunken and enlarged. These two comics are, to my knowledge, the longest comics Alloy has released to this day. This time period is also notable because it was the first and only time in his career that Alloy ever accepted commissioned artwork. He was introduced to many anime such as Cardcaptor Sakura through getting commissions, but he drew a hell of a lot of other shit too. Also, when the brony phenomenon was in full swing, Alloy made some art of MLP characters and fan characters, which he still does occasionally to this day. Some other shows that Alloy started making art of included Lucky Star, Madoka Magica, and The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Alloy's fanbase as it stands today started to really take shape around this time as well. He made artwork for people like Stampy Dragon, whom he had known for quite some time at this point, but also for people like Hank88, who got his start around this time. Hank would go on to be one of Alloy's closest pals, and a prolific artist in his own right. It was also during this time that he began streaming the creation of his work to a live audience, something that would endure to this day. He also set up a small Ask My OC's Tumblr blog, but that died eight years ago. However, the stage had been set for the artist we know today. This is when Alloy truly and completely embraced the art of fetishism. He had been moving in this direction ever since 2005, and was basically a fetish artist by the end of 2013, but 2014 and onwards was when he began to immerse himself fully into the fetish community. For example, Lolicon, one of the main fetishes that defines Alloy Rabbit's art today, had already been foreshadowed as a main subject of his work starting in 2007, when he had first started drawing his OC Rem as a giantess. By 2014, it was already a mainstay in his work, and would only continue to gain prominence to this day. He'd also create a blonde-haired, twin-tailed, gothic Lolia character named Matilda, who would soon become yet another one of Alloy's main characters, alongside his older ones. In addition to this, there's also the fact that he continued to draw various underaged characters from various franchises and macrophilic situations. From Pokemon to Cardcaptor Sakura and Doraemon characters reenacting Cardcaptor Sakura, nothing at all was beyond his grasp. He would of course draw other people's loliosis, as he had been doing forever now. Alley would also go on to appeal to other fetishes, including Feet and Vor, which he started drawing quite recently in the grand scheme of things. However, as time went on, Alloy would notice that DeviantArt sometimes didn't like it when people uploaded fetish material onto the website, so he started to censor some of his art that he deemed too hot for the website and instead publish it on his Twitter and Pixiv. Speaking of Pixiv, it is that site's logo that Alloy uses to censor his art, and he can get quite creative with how he uses it sometimes. In fact, I'd say that Alloy makes it his duty to try and put out as much art as possible on his DeviantArt account without a mature content filter getting slapped on it. But aside from that, there are still some trends which started around 2014, as well as old ones which continued that need to be mentioned. 2014 was the year when Alloy started to draw characters from the Hyper Dimension Neptunia franchise. He would go on to become a very big fan of the franchise, and one character from it in particular. Hyperdimension Neptunia would, of course, be one of Alloy's favorite franchises to make art of, and it has been that way to this day. 
He'd also continue to draw characters from various anime and other franchises, as well as improving his art style to a point where he undeniably possesses a great amount of technical skill. But the same can't be said for his subject matter. And then, there's the streams. As mentioned previously, Alloy started live streaming the creation of his artwork in 2011. However, these streams would go on to be the place where the vast majority of his art is made to the pleasure of his inner circle of fans. He started up his Picarto.tv account in 2016. If you don't know what that is, just imagine if Twitch, DeviantArt, and Furfinity were put in a blender together and you'd get a decent picture of the website, and presumably started streaming there shortly after, making journals informing his watchers when he was streaming and when he stopped. And the streams are where a lot of the community interaction happens. If you're wondering how I know so much about Alloy Rabbit, and his fanbase in particular, look no further than these streams. Of course, I recommend that you stay as far away from them as possible, but a lot of this section consists of information gathered from the streams over a period of more than two and a half years. That's right, yours truly decided to do a little infiltration in order to learn more about Alloy and how his inner circle of fans operates. And boy, did I learn a lot. Let's go over some general characteristics of the streams first. Alloy streams on a weekly basis. He goes live every Saturday. I have only seen two instances of him canceling the stream that can be attributed to real life circumstances over my two and a half year long observation. However, his schedule itself is quite worrying, and not because of the weekly schedule. In fact, it's the time of day that he streams at that has me worried. Alloy tends to stay live for anywhere from 8 to 10 hours or more. Starting at the dead of night around 9pm Eastern Time or later. This means that every week, Alloy stays up until the fucking morning drawing macro lolly art, along with a sizable contingent of his fanbase. Of course, depriving yourself a full night of sleep each week doesn't come without some consequences. In fact, Alloy may have already experienced some adverse effects of pulling off an all-nighter on a regular basis. Aside from occasionally having his sleep schedule totally fucked, there was also one time at the beginning of April of this year where Alloy had a bit of a headache, but decided to stream anyways because, in his own words, it was receding enough where he could think straight. However, by the end of it, it still hadn't gone away yet, and on the very next stream, he ended it early because he wasn't feeling that good. And the week after that stream, he couldn't even bring himself to stream again because he didn't want to repeat what happened last week again. This, incidentally, is one of the two times where he cancelled the streams that I observed. Now, it appears that headache Alloy had at the beginning of April caused a domino effect that ultimately sapped a lot of his inspiration throughout the month. The headache could have also been caused by sleep deprivation, though you should take that, and my theory, with a grain of salt. Anyways, aside from his insane schedule, the stream is the place where his fanbase congregates and shares their art, and boy, there's quite the variety. Let's take a dive into some parts of the fanbase, gradually getting a bit deeper as we go, one user at a time. Remu Toden is an American fan of Alloys who's been on the site for a total of 11 years. They have a following of almost 600 on DeviantArt and Twitter. I have decided to cover him first to establish a sort of baseline for what Alloy Rabbit fans are like. Though I will stress that, like those in all fan bases, the people in Alloy's inner circle are quite varied. Anyways, Reimu Toden is essentially Alloy's main cheerleader, always praising Alloy's art whenever he can, both in and out of chat. In fact, some of his DeviantArt comments can be fucking huge. I'll leave this one scrolling in the background for the time being so you can appreciate its full majesty. I also read this particular comment a long time ago, but back to the video. Anyways, Reimu Toden's art, while not particularly bad in terms of technique, still has some flaws. Aside from the obvious fetishism at hand, 
his style feels like plastic. I get that he's trying to emulate Alloy in his own way by going for an iteration of the anime manga style, but the flat colors combined with the rudimentary shading and expressions make the characters he draws feel more like Barbie dolls and less like people at times. Also, Reimu seems to have a few problems regarding anatomy. This piece here, for example, has quite a bit of issues regarding the shoes of the girl. Her left knee seems to be offset by a few inches, and her right shoe seems to have some manufacturing problems in the lace area. All in all, though, Reimu Toden is around above average in terms of technique. His style has some imperfections, but if he can get rid of those and the lolicon, he'll be in a better position. The Vash, or the Vashiko as he is known on Twitter, is a guy from Texas who has been on DeviantArt for a solid 16 years, though his following is larger on Twitter than on DeviantArt. He also has a lot of specific fetishes, especially when it comes to clothing and footwear. And man, does the Vash deliver when it comes to art. He makes all types of giantess content, from collages to setups using Figmas, which he makes in his own house which he takes photos of. Hell, he even uses screenshots from The Sims fucking 4 to satisfy his fetish, which is honestly the most unorthodox thing I've seen from the Alloy Rabbit community. He even collaged characters from that game a few times. Anyways, aside from that, there's also his drawings, and oh boy do I have a lot to say about his drawings. For about two decades, the Vash has drawn a menagerie of original characters that he calls the Wildflowers. All of them are marionettes, the Vash really likes his marionettes, made to look like young girls which he makes into giants in his comic War Dolls, which he made back in the early 2000s. And man, does he draw them in the most uncanny way possible. You can tell that the Vash is trying to draw cute young girls, but his style makes them come out in a way that they look like dolls, which is quite fitting I'll admit. The face especially is where this is most apparent, especially the eyes and mouth. And despite over 20 years of drawing, these issues haven't gone away. In a nutshell, the Vash is a jack of all trades, and an absolute circus. And here we fucking go. Master of Ra is, by far, one of Alloy's oldest friends, having been on DeviantArt for 14 years and being associated with him ever since the mid-2000s. But as an artist, Master of Ra is quite lacking in his skill. He uses markers and colored pencils to make his stuff, and it really shows in drawings like this one. But let's not forget that this is a guy willing to make an OC who happens to be a 5th grader into a rampaging giant, and also Chibiusa from Sailor Moon as well. Ra happens to really, really like that character by the way. However, there is much more than meets the eye when it comes to Master of Ra, and to find that out we have to look back at another person I've covered in the past, Magical Mama. In the description of that video, which I uploaded way back in December of 2020, I said this. Some eagle-eyed observers may notice a few pieces alluding to a particular peculiarity in her gallery. Because that stuff forms a very, very small minority of her gallery, I am very confident that she's not into that type of stuff. Guess what those few pieces are for me, will ya? And guess who the man behind them is too? That's right, Magical Mama and Master of Ra have been friends on DeviantArt for quite a long time and as such, they've drawn some stuff for each other over the years, with Magical Mama occasionally drawing stuff like this for Master of Ra. That isn't the worst part though. The worst part is that Master of Ra drew Magical Mama's own daughter as a giant starting around 2010 or so. I wish I made that shit up, but I didn't. I should also say that Alloy drew her a few times as well, but I won't be showing that much of it because I'm not sure how YouTube will deal with me showing the likeness of a real child in this context. Naturally, this stuff has led to Master of Ra being somewhat notorious amongst the macrophile community. In fact, 
a lot of his stuff on DeviantArt got reported in 2020, and the site did take action against him, much to his dismay, as well as that of his friends, Alloy Rabbit included, as well as some other notable figures from the Macrophile community. In fact, even some of Alloy's stuff, specifically some of the things he drew from Master of Ra, got taken down around the same time as well. And that reaction highlights a certain point I want to bring up right now. Lolicon is a very contentious topic on the internet, and for good reason. The sexualization of minors is obviously an awful thing, but people who are into lollies, or fetishizing any minor character for that matter, love to hide behind the guise of, this character isn't real, so making fetish art of them is okay because it doesn't involve the exploitation of real people, or there's nothing pornographic about this art of a giant lolly, so therefore it isn't sexual, or some other, perhaps really contrived, argument. Being that they're into lollies, Alloy and his fans exhibit said behavior. Hell, Alloy himself has implied in the past that being against Lollycon is somehow equivalent to stifling creativity and innovation, which is honestly just bullshit. And that goes for every other argument that these guys use to defend their kink. That is because Lollycon is a fetish that normalizes the sexualization of children. Even if lollies aren't real, your brain would still have a hard time separating them from actual children. Master of Ra drawing Magical Mama's flesh and blood daughter in such a context is an example of this in action. It doesn't matter what clothing the character wears, or how pornographic the image featuring that character is. The fact that it's intended and made for the fetish makes Lolicon inherently sexual no matter what. And despite this, there are people out there that still support this shit. People like Alloy Rabbit, who encourages their fans to embrace this fetish and keep going further with it every step of the way. Who encourages them to keep on drawing more and more wacky giant ass lolly scenarios. Let's not forget the fans as well. They are the ones who build the community with people like Alloy to support and be ready to defend themselves. So, what is the conclusion of all this? This whole journey, from 2003 all the way to now? Well, obviously that Alloy and his fans are a bunch of creeps who've been around for fucking ages, but there's something more than that. The real conclusion to be drawn from this video is that a lot of it goes unnoticed by the greater internet. Alloy, as I stated right at the beginning of this video, has over 10,000 followers on both DeviantArt and Twitter, and yet, there's barely anyone who talked about them. In fact, I think that this video is the only comprehensive video about Alloy that has been made so far. And that, I feel, is a problem. I think that we ought to find Lolicon and root it out wherever it may be. Sure, we might not eliminate all of it, but getting people to be aware of it at the very least is a fine goal. And no, I'm not about to pull a Joseph Goebbels and declare all fetish art to be degenerate and getting rid of all fetish porn and all porn in general is impossible and shouldn't even be attempted. Lollycon and fetishes like it is the problem, and calling out people like Alley Rabbit will help to solve it. Well, that was quite the video. And quite an end to this series if you ask me. Who knows what I'll be doing next? But as always, I've been your host, XenonQuirk996. Oh, and speaking of the two and a half year infiltration I did of Alloy's stream chat, I will be posting literally everything in the description. I think that providing full context for all of you will help you determine, fairly, whether or not Alloy is a bad person or not. Well anyways, see you around.